So there are two documents that are open. One document primarily is the unit specification sheet, which is on the left that we will use time and again. Uh, this is primarily, you know, to give us a bit of a cue in terms of, you know, what uh, we are needing to cover in terms of the teaching content. So today, in terms of our discussion, we're going to be focused on learning outcome one. And for that, uh, what I've got here is a presentation that I will go through in terms of some slides. And we'll have a discussion in order to cover some of the assessment criteria and also, you know, uh, the topics which we need to cover uh, in this particular, uh, you know, learning outcome. So just having a bit of a brief background, you know, one of the key things that we want to learn in, in this particular unit, uh, you know, is to primarily understand how the emergence of technology has actually, you know, provided, I would say, distinct advantages to the tourism and hospitality industry. That's the first thing that we need to look at as an overarching outcome in this particular unit. And the second is we need to understand the impact, you know, which technology has had on the operational side of things within this sector. So sometimes we get to hear the news that, you know, so-and-so database was hacked, like in JW Marriott, I think about two and two and a half, three years back, the database was hacked in the US and in terms of 5.2 million customers, uh, you know, got stolen, including identities, passports, and things like that. So there are some good effects of technology, and there are some bad effects of technology, which are also uh, possible. And what we are going to be looking at is, in this unit, basically looking at understanding, uh, first, where it is, uh, what technology has helped us to do, how is it enabled more efficiency, more productivity, more connectivity within the sector, and then, to a certain extent, we will also understand what are the new mediums which the companies are today using to reach out to consumers. Because tourism as a sector is growing globally. It is one of the only sectors which we call the bellwether sector or you know, an industry which, is, uh, which has grown in the last 30 years, year on year. It is the largest employer of people uh, as far as uh, you know, globally it is concerned. So it creates a lot of jobs. And then when we look at this particular sector, we also see that because of the, uh, you know, other advancements which are happening in other sectors like aviation, you look at, you know, um, economy in general within countries, developing countries, we do see that what is happening is that the, um, you know, the world is becoming a smaller place and that mm -hmm. is also enabling more and more people now to travel and that has been made possible to a certain extent because of the connected nature of uh, you know, advantages which technology provides, internet, for example, booking systems, for example, yeah. cheaper flights, yeah. you know, those, those kind of things. So that's the overarching thing that we need to understand. And then when we go into the unit, we'll be looking at understanding basic things like, uh, you know, what uh, technology has brought in, how it has helped the sector to grow, and what positive contribution it is making. Then we'll also look at some of the systems, like you look at online travel agents, agents nowadays, you look at, you know, the... Uh, ERP systems which are utilized within the sector for booking like Amadeus, uh, you know, which is a centralized booking system. So we look at the impact of social media and also how, you know, internet marketing is uh, being enabled uh, through the use of, you know, technology. Is that okay? Yeah. So let's get on with, um, you know, understanding just very briefly. So from my perspective, you know, I have seen uh, when I grew up and I was in school, there was nothing called internet. So internet came about in 1995 uh, when yeah, Tim Berners-Lee yeah. introduced the concept of HTML, hypertext markup language, and that is where at least uh, you know the, we see the beginnings of internet happening. Before that, it was more or less within the domains of you know the American military, which used mm -hmm. uh, which had created a file sharing system called ARPANET or DARPANET, and that uh, was a system which was. Uh, using point-to-point, -point, uh, you know, PPP protocols to be able to share data or information amongst a few set of, uh, you know, offices or locations or cities. So with the onslaught of internet, what we see is that things have changed drastically in the last 20 years. We had the dot-com bo uh, bubble, uh, which was a dot-com burst in the early 2000s, and then we also have seen a lot of new companies which have predominantly, uh, you know, businesses which have got created um, in, in or globally after that bubble burst. So we look at the comings of things like, you know, Facebook, we look at Google, we look at uh, LinkedIn, we, looked at, we look at Skype, PayPal, you know, eBay, Amazon. Some of these companies actually came to, uh, you know, light or prominence 
after the dot com bubble burst in 2000 and then slowly and gradually we've seen some of these companies they only have services they do not own physically anything but they only provide services and the services side of thing is actually driven with the use of information technology and within the travel and tourism sector directly if i talk about an example we will look at airbnb which has no properties, no hotels, but it has created a concept wherein you can rent an apartment, hotel, yeah. you know, a room, yeah. then you're going on a holiday and that allows you to, you know, um, um, travel and obviously have a location of your choice uh, in the place that you're visiting. So the way things have changed, they have predominantly in this sector have changed because of, you know, what you call uh, the introduction or the influx of information technology or related devices, gadgets coming into uh, this sector. Now, I've got a snapshot if I basically look at this in, in terms of a snapshot, what it shows how the evolution of technology has happened in the last 50 years. So when we look at the introduction of the first computer, um, when we talk about you know, IBM mainframes in the 60s and 70s, then we look at the um, you know comp advent of modern PC, as we call it, you know, the personal computer, which was started. Uh, you know, uh, we see some beginnings of that happening within Apple. Microsoft, and then from then onwards, we see, you know, in the 1990s, 2000, some of these things became, you know, much more affordable and accessible to general consumers. Before that, they were predominantly in the corporates or, you know, in big companies. Yeah. And then yeah. because of the advent of internet, we see website of things coming across. So if you look at different classifications here, we talk about, you know, the years in terms of how, uh, you know, technology is shaped here. But here we talk about the various platforms or devices which have got created over the years and how, you know, things are shaping up in the technology. So, yeah, the mainframes led to, you know, client server things within the desktops are introduced. At some stage, we had the advent of Internet. And then after the advent of Internet, you know, we saw in the mid 2000s cloud based computing, cloud based things started to come in. So servers, infrastructure, things like data warehousing, you know, you look at um, distributed computing, all were made possible because of cloud. And then in, after 2010, we see a major impetus behind what is called social media because people have now access to smartphones, PC is not the only device. And with the advent of Apple iPhone in 2007, we had the other devices before that as well, Nokia, the Blackberries, and you know, lots of others. But with the advent of a device which allowed us to do multiple things at one point in time, so email, camera, you know, uh, sending messages, taking a phone call, these were the four or five features, you know, and, and uh, which is what the iPhone actually got introduced with. And that is where it started to drive the ecosystem of the application. So this is where we see now, uh, you know, social media becoming quite big uh, in after 2010. And then um, we see, if, we, if I look at drawing up a parallel after 2015, PC is not the only device. You have tablets, you have, uh, you know, all sorts of smartphones, small, big, you know, in various shapes and sizes. They are all able to connect to the internet and the spread of telecom infrastructure, which has happened. When you look at Greece, for example, there are so many islands. I don't know how many islands, but about, I think, 50, 53 mm -hmm. islands. But in each of the islands, when you look at, there is availability of broadband, there is infrastructure in terms of, you know, connectivity, and all that has been made possible, which allows real-time transactions to happen. That means you can buy and purchase things online. You can see that being delivered. You can track delivery, and all those things are happening yeah. now in yeah. this particular era of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the post-2015. Uh, so technology has, you know, changed lots of sectors, right? But we are going to study the impact of how it has changed the sector within tourism and hospitality management. So if I look at a little bit of a background, you look at traditionally, say, I think the first holiday, if I have to look at personally my own example, I went on a first holiday in 87. That was about, I think, 12 or 13, and I went abroad. And at that point in time, my parents had to book tickets through a travel operator. So we had to go to one of the uh, local, uh, you know, uh, places and we had to book tickets with the travel agent and the travel agent basically made us aware of the choices, things like that, if I remember very clearly now. And that's how booking used to happen. Now, if you look at another connotation of, you know, this thing happening in other uh, industries, you know, email wasn't present. The only way of communication or sending information across to your friends, relative, you know, near dear ones was through a postal letter, isn't it? You could, yeah, sign, yeah. you could write a letter 
and that could be posted and you would get that letter in, you know, if it was international, maybe 10 to 15 days, uh, mm -hmm. but if it was local, maybe four or five days. And, you know, those were the tra traditional mediums of contacting customers or getting in touch with the customers. So paper-based things were the key when we look at, you know, 20 years back uh, in terms of doing operations. You had manuals, you had check-in books, registers at the front desk. You know, how you used to get a check-in, I don't think there was any computer or any software at that point in time. There used to be a manual check-in, which used to happen. We used to use faxes so that yeah. if the travel yeah. operator made a booking, they also faxed a copy of that booking across to, you know, uh, the hotel to say this is a guest which is booked and all that stuff. So all this has changed within two decades, you know, two or three decades, give or take, with the yeah. advent of yeah. technology yeah. coming in. So everything has become digitized. And what we see now is that because of digitization and the instant availability of information, uh, you know, people can see things in real time. Now, there were a lot of problems which the industry faced in the past, things like, you know, maintaining, for example, attendance. Uh, if you had a number of workers working within a hotel, how do you maintain attendance, payroll, because there were no softwares at that point in time. So everything was done manually. Mm -hmm. uh, even, say, for example, if you look at, um, a, a typical example of taking inventory of, say, clothes in a hotel, you know, the bathing, sun, sun bathing, if you have to take an inventory, it all had to be done physically. But today, if you see customers use that, uh, you know, piece of linen in the hotel, and all they do is they put it out uh, or they throw it down a shaft and it goes directly to the laundry department, they've got chips in it, and that clearly verifies that, you know, this has come from this room or this has come from this room. And that is a clear and a faster way of taking inventory of a certain item, you know, just in one of the items in laundry, uh, which has been automated or, you know, uh, benefited from the introduction of, you know, technology. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, if I have to look at summarizing in terms of what are the different types of technologies that we see uh, in use within the hotel, can you think of, you know, a few uh, without looking at maybe taking some cues from the screen, which I mentioned? Can you think of a few systems which a hotel uses nowadays um, that you can think of at the top of your head? Uh, there's a uh, technology, there's a technology that that for reservations. For reservations. Yes, um, so, um, so central reservation system, system is one of them. Yes, That's what they call them. Uh, uh, they have a they have system, system for, use for cards. For cards. Yes, that's cards. correct. Yes, so you have yes, the RFID yes, cards yes. and things like that which you give out mm -hmm. to the guests to get in, check in and check out of their rooms or access facilities in the, within the hotel, yes? There's, there's technology, technology for the customers' doors, doors for the key card. That's correct, yes. Uh, it's also a technology we have at our restaurant, which is... Um, it's a computer where computers program for orders and all that. Yeah, so orders nowadays are not taken up by the the, the waiter or the person who's coming in to serve you, but no. what he brings across is a bit of a tablet or, you know, mm -hmm. some sort of a device wherein he can just tap on the screen, the menu, and, you know, uh, he can take mm -hmm. your orders. Yes? Anything else uh, which you can think of? Uh, no, that's it for now. Of All right, okay. So one of the things, let me bring that out. One of the things you might be able to correlate, security has become a main aspect. So CCTV, for example, for monitoring, you know, uh, guests and guest movements within the hotel and the area. So CCTV is a, you know, is a new introduction. Somebody sitting in a room can actually see all the floors, all the main areas, the foyers, and, you know, and monitor that in terms of movements, isn't it? So you see CCTV typically uh, you know, across all the places, isn't it? We have cameras yeah. in the hotel that just they just record, but we do have cameras in the hotel. That, that's correct. So cameras essentially, which is basically for security or CCTV as we call it, closed circuit television. Then the second thing which you generally, which we are quite aware of, but sometimes we forget, is the availability of Wi-Fi. You know, connectivity. Yeah. yeah? So Wi-Fi network, whether you are in the lobby, you are in the room, swimming pool, you know, in a restaurant, you first thing that you ask somebody is, can I can I get connected to the Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that you look at is in the rooms, I don't know whether, whether I recall or not, uh, whether yeah. I'm correct or not, correct me, because when I went on my first holiday, there was nothing called room service. So we had to right, go to yeah. the restaurant to have breakfast, dinner, uh, and lunch. Yeah. And there was nothing called room service because there were no phones in the rooms. Right, so right, phone right. system is something which we take it for so much granted, you know, phone and yeah. Wi-Fi. Is that sure. today what you can do is you can be in your room and order, a, uh, you know, room service 24-7, mm -hmm. 
uh, from the restaurant or the coffee shop. And that is also allowing you to dial internationally, dial locally, dial into another room or, you know, dial in the city locally. Yes. Correct. One of the other things that you will also realize is that we have now in our rooms is we never used to have safes. So if you had something which was quite expensive, you had to declare it at the reception and ask them to keep it in the safe. But now we have what is called the electronic safe lockers in our own rooms. And you can use those lockers, program them by your code. And when you leave, you know, uh, you leave them open and somebody else comes in and uses it. So lockers, you look at television network, you know, the in uh, closed circuit television, which is coming into the rooms, wherein you have access to movies, uh, you know, programs, uh, you know, various uh, types of, you know, media and uh, uh, data or content, which is coming in either as news, three channels, things like that. So entertainment system is one of the other things, which is also now a part and parcel of Tekna, you know, hotel rooms. There never used to be TVs in the room. So there used to be an open uh, area in the hotel, big open area, wherein everybody used to gather in the evening or in the afternoon to watch a TV, and that used to be it. But okay. nowadays, you have each room having a TV, isn't it, with about say, 600 yeah. channels or, you know, tons and tons of hours of recording available today, uh, you know, through that system. So there are so many technologies. I think for, from my point of view, I look at it this way that, uh, you know, um, in terms of um, currently, if I if I see that what kind of technologies are now in, deployed within a hotel or within this sector, I can mm. probably count about 25, 30, which I have seen and I have interacted with personally. But the, yeah. in every bit of any activity that we do today, what we see is some sort of technology being used within this sector. So yes. I aim a few. I have put across a couple just to show uh, with pictures and obviously, you know, a bit of details is looking at, you know, there is a property management system because if you have uh, a chain of hotels like Hilton Hotel or Marriott or, you know, um, say, for example, Taj Hotels, you look at any big global chain, uh, you will see that in order for you to look at monitoring and also managing inventory in terms of room bookings, you need or some sort of a system which allows you to see all the properties and all the systems connected. So that is a system which is called the property management system. We've covered a bit on, and we understand what is central reservation system. So you can look at various hotels, various rooms, book the rooms through the internet, and that is uh, reservations. There is something called global distribution system, GDS. Now this system allows primarily, you know, uh, this sector to look at inventory in terms of any particular item. It could be any type of inventory. And that could be, you know, done through the route of what is called the global distribution systems. Sometimes you will see that, um, you know, airlines use it. So what they do okay. is to, in order to sell capacity or the seats which are going vacant on a particular sector or in a particular, uh, you know, um, uh, destination, they will basically use this system to, you know, create offers and sell that across to various, make that available to various online travel agents or agencies and through which, you know, they can sell the unsold okay. inventory. Yeah. Then you have point of sale terminals. Some One of the examples that we see is when you choose to pay the payments to the customers, mm -hmm. uh, customer take payments, you use a credit card machine or a POS terminal. Sales mm -hmm. and catering, you have yield management, guest history, uh, in order to look at, you know, how many times the hotel, you've stayed in the hotel, what you eat, what you prefer, you know, preferences. So there is some sort of system today which a lot of companies have in order to maintain electronic records of their guests and the, the stays that they've done. Telecommunication is telephone. You have lots of other instruments like Wi-Fi, you know, CCTV cameras, things like that. You have in-room systems starting with the lock at the door. Um, you have locking systems. You have payroll, time and attendance, and, you know, scheduling systems, and obviously yes. accounting. And this gives you an idea in terms of the types of systems which are currently being used within uh, you know, uh, a particular destination or a particular property that you look at within the hotel industry. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Now, let's get into, after a bit of broader understanding in terms of the concepts, in terms of what technology has done, how it has impacted, and, you know, what are the clear uh, areas in which it has provided benefits to this sector. Let's look at understanding how this change is impacting with regards to the historical developments in the market you know let's look at the past and compare it with what's available now so the first thing that we see is some of these systems that you will see the common thread across all these systems which are being mm -hmm. used is the internet or connectivity 
Yes. So with the advent of internet, which is coming, or the mm-hmm. connectivity online, uh, whichever way you call it, has made available that some of these products systems can be customized to suit a particular customer in the industry. That means customization would mean when you log into Hilton Hotel page, you will see a Hilton logo. When you log into a Marriott Hotel place, you know you will basically see a Marriott logo. So there are various mediums through which customers now can be reached, and they allow the service that they are getting or the product that they are asking for to be customized to their requirements with regards to the advent of internet. So right. just to make this point clear, <coughs> what we look at is if you go to a traditional store for buying, say, a t-shirt or a, you want to buy a suit, what will happen is in the store, there might be three, four, five, maybe 10, 15, 20 types of, uh, you know, different sizes available. But if you don't find the size, the first thing that you get to hear from the uh, uh, you know, this person who's serving you is that, uh, my apologies, sir, this size is not available. Why don't you try online? All right. Yeah. So what they say is, why don't you visit our store online and some of these, uh, you know, will be available there. So sometimes when you look at odd sizes, sometimes when you look at colors that you're very specific about, they might not have all the store inventory, uh, you know, all the inventory in the store available, but some of this can be but easily... On their online, online store, they would have the That's right. that they have. So the internet now is having a big impact because marketers can use the internet connectivity and reach out to customers and provide a very tailored and customized service uh, mm. to what they're asking for. So in the context of this particular sector, if I just give an example, Maybe 10 years back when you still were going on a vacation and you used to look at booking a room, you went to a travel operator, spoke to him on the phone, whatever it is, and said, okay, can you book me a deluxe room? Now, today, that deluxe room can be of different types. There's an executive deluxe room. There is a deluxe room suite. There is a double uh, deluxe room. And in some cases, there are different types of nomenclature available. Now, this has all been possible because of the wide ranging of choices which the customers are demanding. So at that point in time, when you say, okay, can I look at what's the difference between this and this, the person would normally would have spoken to you on the phone. But today, right. what you do is they send you a brochure on the email or they send you, okay, say, are you in front of the PC? Can you log into the website? And you can you click on this and you see all the different types of rooms. So the internet of things has made it possible for customers to experience something even before they buy or rent that particular product or service. Mm. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah. So if I decide to go on a vacation and what I want to do is when I go on a vacation, I want to see what kind of room it is, what what kind of resort it is, what kind of facilities it has. In the olden days, it used to be made available through a brochure, isn't it? So you had to ask the travel agent, can you send me a brochure? Can I get a brochure of that in the post? So you Mm -hmm. wanted to see how physically the resort looked like, what are the rooms like, what are the facilities available, do you have a pool, a business center, a coffee shop. But today, it's all possible. As opposed to a website. As opposed to a website. Absolutely, absolutely, through the website. So if I have to summarize what we have spoken so far in one or two slides, let's look at the snapshots of comparing how things look like 20 years back and how they look like now. Right. So this used to be a front desk. I would say about 10 years back, can you see all wood, maybe a few PC, somebody behind the desk, maybe a TV running, things like that. Mm -hmm. But now if you go to any hotel, you find the same thing, but a very modernized version of that with touch screens, auto check-ins, you know, uh, maybe two or three people at the front desk, depending on the size of the hotel or the location. And then you have access to a lot of other intelligent data things like weather being shown on one TV, there might be, uh, you know, uh, events happening in the hotel which are being shown and another screen is showing you, for example, things like, um, uh, you know, maybe a CCTV or an event which is happening, it's being broadcasted or you are looking at the news. Credit card systems, today what has happened is these machines have not literally changed that much, but you see what is now made available is contactless systems which allow you contactless. So credit cards have evolved, but, uh, you know, they are also becoming contactless that for up to a certain amount, you can actually just tap and, you know, pay, uh, make the payment. What Wi-Fi, I would like to mention, what I, would like yeah. to mention is I saw a customer one day, he had a, his card on his phone, uh, yes. just on his screen on his phone, and he used that, his phone on the machine, contactless, and he paid yep. that way. 
So absolutely. So when you look at Apple Pay, when you look at you know some of the features which are now available through smartphones because of mm-hmm. the RFID or you know uh, the the technology which allows you to tap and use is now integrated in some of the modern smartphones. So with the use of that, you can actually make payments uh, straight away right. rather than having to even use a card because they can electronically score your card, uh, store your mm-hmm. card on your phone, and that is connected to either one of the systems like Apple Pay or, you know, Samsung Pay and, you know, some of these smartphone companies which have introduced and MasterCard and Visa and allows you to pay like that. Now, wireless networks used to be only in, you know, maybe the lobby, restaurant or in the common or the public areas, but now you have access to them within the rooms, uh, any place throughout the hotel. And I I think one of the other things, which is what we are going to discuss in the future learning outcomes would be the importance of security now. Things like activities which you do, um, global terrorism to a certain extent uh, is impacting that uh, you know the tourism and travel industry because of uh, because of this monitoring of cust- uh, guest movements and areas of the hotel because they are large properties you know some of the resorts that I've been to for example in Santorini uh, uh, in Greece you know they are very large resorts they are spread across yes. acres and acres and when you look at that the only way they can physically monitor the movement of guests because they have access to you have access to private beaches and for other things in terms of guest security you know yeah. you have the involvement of now supervision which is done primarily through you know cameras so if you look at the greatest impact that we've seen in terms of technology is when you check into the hotel you know how quickly it is possible uh, now with, with a couple of things they take your credit card swipe it all your details are already available on the screen the moment they retrieve your name by by asking your last name and that allows you know this process to be shortened but if i look at 10 years back and if i vaguely remember you know a check-in process used to be about half an hour or at least so please grab a seat and you know as kids we were we used to get you know you were very tired after traveling so parents please can you sit down we have a number of customers who are checking in so they used to stagger the check-in times in the hotel so starting at nine o'clock, 9.15, 9.20, you know, every half an hour and have a lot of people checking in and checking out. So right, right. this has been streamlined because of the use of technology, which has now come in and different types, you know, uh, things like computers, uh, the centralized reservation system, you have mm-hmm. access to, uh, you know, technology which allows customers to be checked in and rooms if they are ready or not. And all this is possible because of telephone and, you know, back-end connectivity available through the telephone with the, you know, the department in the in the back-end, which is primarily, say, the, you know, the um, you have a front desk and at the back-end you have the, you know, the people who are actually managing the inventory within rooms is ready and things like that. Yeah. So I put a couple of slides just to explain, uh, which are self-explanatory uh, in terms of, you know, point of sale. So if you look at, I don't know, um, I think the first time I looked at using something from the mini bar in your room, uh, mm-hmm. you know, when you rent a room was probably in 94, 95. So when I looked at buying, you know, if you, if I took out a chocolate and had that in my room, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, when you checked out, they knew exactly what item has been missed, uh, you know, has been consumed because mm-hmm. there is some sort of a system within the mini bar, which keeps track of what inventory is moved and, you know, how it is, uh, how and when it is moved. And they do not do not send now persons to go and check, did you use anything from the mini bar? Uh, they don't ask you that question anymore nowadays in a lot of hotels is because they know exactly if there's a drink which has been taken, some chocolates which have been taken, crisps or flyers have mm-hmm. been taken. And they have that, is, what been put in. Yeah, that is because of the inventory management system, which is, which is involved uh, within that place and each item is placed on a certain, uh, you know, um, sensor-based tray. If the if the item is moved and the sensor can detect that it's been taken out or it's been, and you know, that way it allows you to do the inventory. So those are things uh, which have now become, you know, absolutely possible because of different types of devices and gadgets uh, and the connectivity in terms of technology which allows you to, you know, do this now without any effort or without any people being involved primarily. From a historical perspective, all had to be done by people. Somebody had to go into your room to check your mini bar, mm-hmm. check the inventory, what you've used, what you've not used. And nowadays it all happens mm-hmm. primarily because there are, you know, connectivity uh, in terms of sensors and different gadgets available to track all this. Uh, historical perspective would have been 
uh, if somebody was checking in, you would check in. There's an account creation which happens. There's some entries that they do in the account. Uh, they will post your account. They will update your account. And at some stage when you check out, your account is updated for minibar, usage of laundry, coffee shop, other facilities. Mm-hmm. Account, you settle by credit card and you check out. But yes. this part of the process is now all on PC. There is nothing happening in terms of paper. I think 10 years back, if you look at when you checked out of the hotel, they used to give all, all the bills just to prove that you've had four drinks, you've had this dinner, you've used that, you've done this, you've done that. But nowadays, everything comes out on one invoice, you know, and the breakup of all the activities is specifically possible because of the centralized, you know, reservation system. So all you do is you have a card. So every facility that you're using in the hotel, the customer taps that card and, you know, that transaction gets recorded. And that right. can be immediately recorded at the front desk when you're checking out. You know? Right. Well, I'll All tell this. you that when we work yeah. at the restaurant, anytime a customer makes a charge on their room, they yeah. put their signature, their room number, but those receipts get kept all throughout the day and they get given at the end of the night to the the night auditor. And they keep those receipts for proof, well, I guess, for evidence. Absolutely, yes. So what tends to happen is sometimes we are required to maintain records because even if you look at taxation in every country, most countries yeah. have asked people to look at personal tax when you do. They have asked you to maintain records for a period of six years. Because yeah. sometimes when they do the audit, you are rec- you have to look at this paper-based trail. So you have to look yeah. at physical receipts and other bits. But yeah. in most places now, yeah, I'm, when I say most places now, if, you tr- if you've traveled after 2015, uh, especially in Europe, in the U.S., you will generally see, for example, they give you one card and that records all the electronic transactions. They will also not even give you a receipt. So if you go to an Apple store, for example, and you buy something today, they say, do you want a copy of the receipt or should we email it to you? Because it's all linked to your Apple ID. So the moment you link, first thing that they ask you to do is when you get into the store, they say, can you sign into your Apple ID? And then the whole transaction bit starts from there. But yes, in order to maintain the paper trail, they will produce reports. They will, in some cases, have these electronic receipts which are stored on the system. And that is because sometimes you require proof and, you know, you require uh, them because it has to be proved or somebody is disputing a particular charge, then you have to produce those receipts with signatures to say, that, okay, sir, you signed for it and you you had uh, taken the service, so here's the record, here you go. Yeah. So in some places, it still continues on that route. I'm not saying the whole sector has got modernized, but as we no, generally... I would say yeah. Greece is a little behind, let's say, or maybe where I'm at now. The place that I'm working is a little behind. It is to do with, you know, obviously investment. And at mm-hmm. some stage, this will be dependent on the return which the owners get from that property or that from, from that, uh, you know, uh, resort or that hotel. And at some stage, this kind of modernization is still slowly and gradually happening. So when we look at, uh, you know, um, uh, places in Greece, for example, you look at some places in Portugal, you look at places in Spain, uh, which are more frequented destinations for tourism and travel within Europe, you will see that uh, the systems tend to vary. But if you look at it as a bit of a benchmark, you see Wi-Fi pretty much everywhere. You see CCTV yeah. pretty much everywhere. Um, you know, things like checking into a hotel, centralized reservation systems. You know, you have RFID cards for your room. You no longer have keys. Some hotels, you know, you look at when we look at UK as well, and you go to bed and breakfast where you're staying only overnight, and it's primarily for staying, you still get a key. You still get a physical key because it's a small business being run by, uh, you know, a small family business which is being run. So you will get that as well. But in general, there is a trend towards modernization, but it is happening at a varied pace depending on, you know, the traffic, return and investment and things like that. So this is showing you, say, for example, of electronic system. This is basically, uh, you know, the old card machine. Now you have basically, you know, uh, contactless available. But yeah. it still accepts, uh, you know, money either ways. You have mini bars, as I mentioned to you. One of the key things which looked at categorization of hotels when we stay one star, two star, three star, four star. One of the key things which is discussed and it comes in the star rating is that if you, uh, if the hotel is called a five star, that means it needs to have a swimming pool, centralized heating or a air conditioning system, 24/7 right. coffee shop, uh, you know, a mini bar and an entertainment system primarily, you know, within uh, the hotel, so where, from which you can get, you know, movies and other bits. And that would decide, you know, obviously the star rating as far as, you know, the uh, 
the hotel is concerned. So let's get on to the second, uh, you know, learning assessment criteria, which talks about, you know, the impact of contemporary technology developments. Now, do you know what is the meaning of the word contemporary? Uh, what do you think? What is the meaning of the word contemporary? Modern. Contemporary, in terms of literal definition, I don't think it'll, uh, it will also mean modern, but what I'm looking at is how do you define the word contemporary? It is modern, yes, it is present day. It talks about things like something which is happening in our times. Mm -hmm. So when we were talking about historical developments, comparing 10 years back, 20 years back, now looking yeah. at understanding what is happening now, contemporary. That means what is happening in the modern day or current times right now. So what are the yeah. current developments in today's point of view. So when I look at internet, it was there in, and it was introduced maybe 10 years, 15 years back. You look at things like CCTV, credit card machines, they were introduced 15, 20 years back when all these technology was introduced. Can you think of technology which has been introduced now? That means in the last two, three years or you uh, know, something yeah. introduced now. Any ideas? Uh, uh, all I can think of is those maybe those booking sites that have come recently, and as you said before, Airbnbs and those type of sites. But those are not technology based. I mean, they're technology well, based, but they're not. Yeah, it, in a way, yes. So when you look at what you've said is correct. So for example, these are companies or companies which are providing services. Like Airbnb is using today a technology wherein they are able to ask users to sign in, uh, you know, yeah. list their places with photographs and other things and cost. And they are charging a small surcharge or an admin fees in order to provide that booking system on the other side to customers who yeah. want to rent or, you know, uh, lease out a property. But when you look at the other bit that you mentioned, uh, you know, which is because of the use of technology and Internet in general, what we do get to see is that there are lots of things which are now coming into this particular sector, which is things like, and, you know, this is giving an example of Deliveroo, for example. Uh, Deliveroo is, again, uh, you know, you can buy a food. Uh, you know, if I look at smartphones and the app yeah. creation which happens. Say, you know, maybe so smartphones is something contemporary that's come about. Because okay. you, so you, you can take a smartphone, find a hotel and book, you know, right away, let's say. Absolutely. So that's a good example. So today in the Internet of Things, as we call, with the app, smartphone itself, using the app, you can look at so many things. Uh, from the phone itself. So a smart network or a smartphone allows you to look at lots of things. Now the technology which is now coming into our, when I say modern day times, is that today your fridge also has a, uh, you know, some sort of a monitoring system. Your washing machine has some sort of a monitoring system. Uh, your car, for example, when you look at cars today, they have a SIM card built in, they can track your movement, uh, you yeah. know, and all those things can be diagnosed. In some of the more premium Hotel rooms, you see not just uh, a phone, but you see a video phone. Or you see a phone through which you can do a video call or a video chat, and that is something which is available. Um, in the modern times, you look at oh, most of the rooms used to have something called a VCR, video cam get the cassette recorder, a DVD player, but today all of that has become monetized. That means you have all the movies and everything stored in the cloud or in a centralized server system. And from there, yeah. in room 101, you're watching Baywatch. In room 102, you're watching Avengers. In room 103, you're watching, you know, um, some some other movie. You're watching some of the serials somebody's watching. And all of that is being served real time, you know, currently yeah. uh, using some of the technology that we see in our case right now. The other things that you see now is that in sometimes when you order a room service, what tends to happen is when you order a room service, they don't even get you a receipt. What they do is they get a signature of you and the bill gets integrated and you can see your electronic bill on your TV itself in the room. Oh, right. You're able to see what all facilities you're using, your bill uh, as of right now. I think last I went to Las Vegas and in Bellagio when we stayed, uh, maybe last to last mm -hmm. year, I did see that, you know, you, they did not even send you a bill. So when you were checking out, uh, all you mm -hmm. do is on your... TV remote, press the checkout button and it will show you a screen uh, wherein it will show you the, uh, you know, total itemized billing of what you've used as services, spa, for right. example, restaurant, you know, uh, anything from the minibar. And all you do is go downstairs and check out. Right. And they, if they ask you, do you want a copy of the bill or do you want it to be sent on the email? And, you know, mm -hmm. all they do is they basically send it to you on the email. There's nobody likes to carry a copy. And all this is possible, which is currently happening in real time 
right now because uh, this is technology which is impacting the hotel industry as of today, as of date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. CCTV, as I mentioned to you earlier, you said, you know, um, they keep recording and, you know, all that stuff. But today, uh, because of the video wall, you know, number of TVs or screens added to make a large wall allows you yeah. to monitor the movement of guests and somebody will sit in that room, uh, maybe one or two, or depending on how big the property is, and they yeah. would monitor these rooms and the movements for safety, security, and that is something which is happening in, you know, real time. So if I look at an example, which I gave earlier was, if I look at Hilton, or if I look at any international uh, group of hotels, large chain, which is present in different countries, different cities, you will see that today their dependence on technology is unprecedented. That means they cannot think of imagining uh, a scenario wherein they are managing multiple properties across multiple cities without the use of technology. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So it is very difficult today. If the system goes down, you see airline system goes down, all the flights are canceled, delayed, or you know yeah. postponed because uh, there is no way to get real-time data in terms of what is the availability of uh, you know carriageways or what is the availability of hangars and flight landing or taking off. And that that is the reason why you know they have to look at cancellations and delays or postponement of uh, you know flights. Is that okay? Yeah. Good stuff. So any questions on today's coverage of Learning Outcome 1, which basically looks at impacts of technology, types of technology, and how is it impacting in the historical sense and also in the modern day or the current day sense and how it is helping the industry uh, to you know provide services to customers? No, I think it covered everything. It was, it was understood. understood. Good stuff. So there are one or two handouts which are available, which I've, uh, you know, essentially created. They've been, uh, you yeah. know, created from different sources. And if you read one or two of these handouts, it will give you, uh, you know, some more information on, uh, say, for example, applying the, you know, the use of technology using, for example, Porter's Five Forces model. Now, if a company has to take strategic decision to deploy technology because it's going to be cost, cost, uh, they need to take a decision which will involve a lot of costs. But yes. at the end of the day, the decision makers, the chief executive or the board will look at offsetting that cost with the kind of increases in productivity, efficiency, which it will bring uh, to the uh, to to the industry or to the hotel chain. So one of the handouts which I've pr- provided is primarily from the research website uh, Pyramid, which basically provides the application of Porter's Five Forces model to see how hotel chains or the board, uh, you know, management in the uh, big resorts or hotels actually looks at making um, a decision on implementation of technology within the uh, within the hotels or within their business. And also, the, another, the, the Porter's the Porter's Five Forces analysis is how. So how to use it as a strategic tool, as a mechanism, mechanism to find out. Whether, that's correct. To find out if other competitors are offering TV in their room, should we offer TV? So they have to look at, you know, comparing, yeah. comparing with the competitors, looking at market prices, looking at suppliers, and looking at the demand from consumers in terms of what are the preferences which consumers are asking for. Because there are loads of things which consumers are asking for, but mm. you have to rationalize from a point of view of cost and make a decision in terms of what maximum numbers of consumers are asking for. So if the decision to introduce mini bars or a 24-7 working of the coffee shop or a centralized heating or a centralized air conditioning was introduced, this was done keeping in mind studying the various trends and over a period of time the requirements of customers, uh, you know, and the preferences of customers. uh, And this was done using maybe a key framework model like a Porter's five forces model, like a SWOT analysis to find out what are the key things that we need. And those are bits that you need to understand from a framework point of view to Mm -hmm. look at, you know, doing the assignment as well. So another handout which I've created is basically talking about technology usage in hotels. So we looked at on the slide, different types of technology. If I, if I just go back to this slide, which is this one, but in order to give you a bit of meat on bones, you know, some background about what are the various systems, there's a handout, uh, you know, for Hilton hotels and what kind of technology they are using across in different places and a bit of a write-up to explain each part of that technology. 
Yeah, okay. okay. So that will help you cover learning outcome one, uh, 1.1 and 1.2. Mm-hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Good stuff. So um, I'm going to send a copy of this recording to you in about 15, 20 minutes once it's become, one, once it becomes available. And yeah. I'll also send you a copy of the presentation, though it's already there. But just as a medium, I don't know whether you were able to set up your app, uh, but recordings will appear somewhere here uh, in about half an hour's time. So you will see a recording appearing here. And you, when you click on that okay. recording, it will take you to the cloud, and you can listen to that recording in the, and see the lecture again if you want to. All right. Okay? Okay. That's brilliant. So what we will do is we'll catch up now in the next session. And in the next session, we will discuss learning outcome two. And that will basically look at focusing on, uh, you know, uh, understanding the usages of technology. But we will study something called management information systems and different types of management information systems for which we will look at learning outcome two. All right. Okay. Okay. That's all right. That's brilliant. So let's get are you expecting yeah. any work from me? Am I expecting to begin any work, any report writing right now, or is it all just all just all, towards the end. Just, all just towards the end? To be honest, because when you look at the assignment brief, which I'm just opening up on the system yeah. right now, what you will see yeah. is that the assignment brief, you know, like there are only two tasks or three tasks. Task one will cover learning outcome one, one point one, one point two, learning outcome two, and a part of learning outcome three. So once we have done more or less. You know, the uh, learning outcome three, and we are towards covering learning outcome four. That is when actually you can start looking at uh, starting to attempt the assignment. Okay. So it will be one piece that you will send towards the end uh, once the unit is finished, and it will be one document broken down into two or three activities as it's given in the assignment brief, and that will be the assignment that you will get feedback on. Right. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So, Take care. I'll catch up with you. The next session that we have got scheduled is on Thursday, isn't it? Yeah, we can do it. Today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Uh, Sorry. Session is next Wednesday. I'm free Friday. This Friday. If it's up, it's fine for you. Otherwise, next week, Wednesday. No, no, that's fine. I can check uh, with Samid because I can see the calendar right now. And 23rd, Mm -hmm. he's on me, but we can do a session on Friday as well. Same time in the morning. Same time Friday. It can be done. Same time Friday. Is that going to work for you? That'll work for me. Would it work for you? Yeah, yeah, that should work for me as well. That's fine. I don't have any classes on Friday. So I'll ask him to send you an invite, uh, you know, for learning outcome two, which we'll cover on Friday. Okay, no problem. Brilliant, Peter. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll Thank catch you. up with you on Friday. Take care. All right. You have, you have a good afternoon.